Good morning. Well, we're back at stuff here this morning. So um, I've had little success, little success in finding the correct pins that we need to get this job done. Uh, if you missed yesterday's video, we got some wiring issues on our anhydrous bar. A couple of pins in one of the connectors were corroded out. It proved to be very difficult to figure out, um, but it's right here. It's the wire harness that connects to the flow meter so i'm going to um attempt to fix this and make it work so i stopped at the john deere dealer they had these pins and they fit snug on the pins in the connector on the flow meter um, uh, sensor the problem is that they have the wrong crimp style and they don't fit into the mating connector i don't have right here so what we're going to do is crimp these pins on the wires there. We're going to take some heat shrink and put it right to the end of the connector. And then we're just going to slip these connectors onto this sensor plug, tape everything up really well so that it won't pull apart and finish. And then we're going to fix it later. Okay, well, I crimped those ends on. I heat shrunk each of them right out to the tip of the connector, stuffed them on the pins, and it worked. So I've got a big piece of heat shrink here we're gonna put right over that connector, and then we're gonna tape it, and we're gonna go test it in the field. All right, I got it together. I got the union reconnected. I think we're ready. Let's see what happens here. Oh, bleeder. Take two. All right, good deal. Muffins blown up. Yeah. Cool, no leaks, looks good. Oh, praise the Lord, we've got a flow meter reading. It's erratic, it's gotta dial in and bleed all the Oh, I don't have the valves on the tank open. Thank God it's working. All right. Well, I just pulled through these ends because I wanted to see if it would work at all or not. It does. I guess we can go back to the field. That's good. Oh, it is working. We got gas going on. We've got pressure in our gauges. We've got a rate reading, a gallons per minute reading. We're making a map. None of those things were happening. Well, the gas going in and the pressure happened yesterday, but none of the stuff on the monitor was happening yesterday. So, excellent. Now, this tank is about empty. I doubt we'll even make this round, but we're gonna run it out. So, um, cool, 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 cool. Okay, well, we made our tank change. Everything's still working, working good. I am running a calibration on our flow meter on this load because, well, um, it's a new flow meter and it does give you a calibration number to put in there which is what we put in the default but we need to fine tune it and the advantage of things breaking yesterday and not being able to do it yesterday is well today we can get a wait because they're open so uh like i said yesterday i don't know that we're gonna have enough anhydrous now after that tank got put on so heavy yesterday because we had no rate control with no flow meter um so we've got this tank and two more at the farm and uh We'll see. I don't think that's going to be quite enough, but it'll be close. So Brock's working today, and so I had him hook up my uh, gooseneck trailer to my Chevy truck, and uh, he brought that down. We've got a whole bunch of empty boxes in the barn there that we need to get back to Waldron, but there's a dairy farm right, right there, directly across the section from us, maybe over there, I don't know, I can't tell exactly. And they've got, uh, I don't know, six boxes, a couple pallets, something like that, so... I sent him over there to pick those up. Hopefully that goes okay. And uh, things are working. Things are working. That's a good day. Hopefully we can fly through this anhydrous here this morning. We've probably got somewhere around 85 acres to go. And it's 10 o'clock. I guess by 1 or 2 o'clock we should be done. Frustrating. Progress. On the last pass of this field, our tank, it says, is about empty. 
so we're definitely going to be short with what that means because there's 72 acres in the next field and uh, we get just under 30 acres on a tank so i have two full ones not quite 60 not going to get 10 more out of this one um yeah, it's all right so as soon as i'm done with this pass we're going to fold her up head across the road and get started there and see uh i don't know should take us two hours really well, that's not good. We have raindrops. Can't catch a break. My tank is empty. Phil just brought the next one. But it's kind of raining. It's not sticky yet, but ain't going to take much here. We're going to keep going. I am down to 42 acres to go in this field. I think it would take me about probably an hour and a half. I just, I don't know if, I don't know if we've got an hour and a half. I am going to be super bummed if we get rained out again and don't finish this after yesterday. Um, they're calling for rain for like the next five or six days. Now we aren't going to get rain the next five or six days, but if we get a tenth or two here and another two tenths tomorrow or Wednesday, it's going to take a while before we get back into it. And this car is starting to grow. And we got 350 acres to do back at Waldron yet, so the side dressing needs to get done. It would be really, really helpful to get this 40 acres done here and not get rained out so that we can go back to Waldron and as soon as we can work up there, we can get back to working rather than having to wait for stuff to dry out down here. Well, the rain kind of let up for a minute. Now we're getting a touch more. Looking at the radar here, it's all light. We're over here. Um, and we're right on the edge of it but it's still raining so we're down to 27 just get done i need an hour the rain has subsided for now that's good my window got smeary but that's okay um it's it's drying up or a little bit and, uh i mean it never got muddy but it was damp on top there we've developed two leaks one on that gauge right there it's the center one um, yep, needs fixed. I'm not gonna take the time to do it right this second. And then row one down there is still not sealing very good. And that is the one that's got the bent closing wheel arm. It looks much worse going this direction than it does when we're going that direction. And I don't understand that. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. And uh, Phil did order a new closing wheel arm, so we will get that and maybe tomorrow or the next day and get it fixed. This tank's about empty. Um, I've looked to make sure that the hoses weren't off or something that was painfully obvious wrong other than that closing wheel arm being off a little bit. And it's not, that's gotta be what it is. The, the closing wheels are not centered behind the opener and therefore the front uh, closing wheel is probably three inches off to the side, maybe four inches off to the side instead of right on the side of the trench so when it's not pushing dirt in on top of that anhydrous band like it should and then the second closing wheel is basically running right in that trench and so it's not doing a great job either which is why you get that that looks far worse than it is like that looks bad but it takes so much liquid to make uh or so much vapor to make up a gallon of liquid that we're not losing that much there it's it's it needs addressed and, and fixed. The fix I don't have for today, and I've got like 10, 15 acres left. Like, I, we're just gonna do it. See, I turn around and it's like it seals so much better. There's still a little bit gassing off down there, but nothing like it is when I'm going the other direction. So, I don't, I don't, I can't explain that. It must be the wind pushing it back with me or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Well, we're gonna make it. Doing the last half pass here. It's dried up, the bars works better. Man, you get a little bit of moisture and, and it, it just, the dirt doesn't flow the same and it doesn't seal quite as well. But uh, working really good now, even that road down there, we're going the way that's supposed to be bad. Um, but it's better, so. <sighs> good deal, I'm so glad to be done with this. So the plan from here, we're gonna drop this tank because this tank stays down here. Phil's gonna get that returned for us. I am going to uh, run the bar back to Waldron, and maybe we'll keep going up there. Yeah, yeah, we'll probably do that. 
Well, this is maybe a first and interesting. Uh, I hope it's not too narrow of a one lane road up ahead. Guess we'll find out, won't we? I made it. Look at this. Full service. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, yeah, so we went to Berkey, did 285-ish acres of corn, and came back on one tank of fuel. It was a whole tank of fuel, but we did good there. So uh, I went ahead and unfolded it here, and we've gotten just a little bit of rain here. I think about the same as Berkey, but it's wet on top now. Um, what I would like to do is try and fix that row one. So I want to take it apart and double check and inspect stuff a little bit closer. But I think if I move the closing wheel arm to a different row, it might work better. And I'll explain that in a minute, so. Okay, so we took this blade and gauge wheel. It's over there off. I thought maybe there was a chance one of these hoses had rubbed through or something. They were not. There's nothing wrong with them. They're well uh, seated on these tubes. So there's nothing wrong with it there that would cause it to leak. I think it really was just that closing wheel. So Brock has taken this one off of row number three. And we're going to swap them just to see if uh, that makes a difference. One, if it centers it better, and it really is, because I believe it's this arm right in here on that one that is bent, and uh, two, if that helps. So I don't know if it will, but we're gonna try it. Yeah, that is definitely where the problem is. That's much, much more centered. So we'll see if it makes a difference or not. Hopefully that'll help. This, so the reason, yeah, okay, and that's what I was talking about in the cab. I knew there was something I was going to tell you later, and I forgot. Uh, the reason that this row here is leaking worse and why I think that it's going to help to move that is because this row gets a rate and a half. See, we've got two tubes here. Uh, there are two lines that are putting out in the same row, and we've got the half rate. And it goes back to that. We're side dressing 15 rows, but we're covering 16 rows, so the outside row gets a rate and a half. It works out. Trust me, it does. This row here is just getting... A single normal rate, one row. It does not have a vapor tube. It does not have a uh, wheel track or anything like that. So it's got as easy, nice conditions to seal in as possible. And therefore, that being bent just a little bit probably won't make as big of a difference and matter as much. Yep, so there's the one that was on row one. Definitely that arm is bent because that one is now not centered. We'll see if it makes a difference or not. I fixed my leak on the gauge there, took it apart, it was loose, put some do pipe dope on the threads, put it back together, so that should be good. Brock went through and checked our beaver tails again to see if there was any loose. There was one, which Phil and I checked them already this morning once, so yeah. I think we're ready to hook up to a tank. All right, we're hooked back up to our doubles. These are a little over half empty. I think we got maybe 15, 20 acres worth of gas on them. So we're gonna run up to the field just around the corner here and uh, see how everything works. We had just a touch of rain, like I said, but it's not really wet, so I think we'll be okay there. We've got uh, all that cover crap down to do that may soak the water up a little bit better. Working. And we got a muck hole. This corn's a little bigger than the stuff. Right across the road was where we buried some of that corn. The field that I was showing Wade last week. Oh, it's still soft. Just better slow down, slow down. Oh, it's definitely soft. The tractor's spinning a little bit. Don't bury it in the muck, please. Okay. Uh, now we've got to deal with these end rows with all them dang electric poles. You guys remember that field? We got three sets of end rows because, yeah, electric pole, electric pole, electric pole, over and over and over again. I have decided it is faster and less destructive for me to just fold up go past the pole than it is to back up and try and jog around them. And unfold. Yep. Also, it rained on this end of the field. There's like water on the side of the road, but if you look out there, you guys, I don't know if you can tell, but the line's like right where the end rows are, right? Right in there. It's, it's wet and then it's dry. So, oh well. Tank change. Um, let's see, what did we get on those? 13 acres, okay. I thought we might get 15. But whatever, that's close enough. Um, so we've got this big tank, two more big tanks sitting at the farm, but it sounds like that's all we're gonna get in big tanks tonight. So we can pull the small ones 
if we want, they would weigh some out for us, but it's four o'clock and the guy that fills is going home. I said, okay. So I think Brock's gonna bring us um, one small one, but that's enough for over 100 acres tonight. I don't need to do more than that. We are moving right along here. One thing I am finding, this field's got a little roll to it. She's, it's a little hillier than some of our other ones. and We don't have enough power on these hills to maintain our speed. It's uh, We're bouncing anywhere from seven to nine, nine and a half. It's just fine. We're flying across it. It's great. Just interesting to me that it really bogs it down. This bar pulls pretty hard. There's one of them property line posts that's right in the middle of a pass and would be super awesome if we could drive over it. You know, like the ones I made the other day. Well, I just changed tanks again. This is our little tank that we've got. Um, usually we can do right around 20 acres on one of these small tanks. And I have 19.9 left in the field. So it's gonna be very close as to whether or not I can finish. Brock is dropping me another big tank over there, He's, which is fine because we're going to do that field over there. So um, I don't think we should have that tank and one more back at the farm. I don't think I will have quite enough to finish that field over there tonight. There's 65 acres in that field and we usually get about 30 on a, a big tank. So so we've got some point rows on this side of the field. We're, we're, we're about done. I mean, we got a lot of turns to make, but there's not much here. But this is where the section control really shines. So if you'll watch, these blue triangles show me that those sections are on. And if you watch the overlap map here, as we get close to it, they'll start shutting off one at a time. There's one, two, and three. So, so that uh, kind of helps save a little bit on the um, anhydrous costs, you know, because you're not putting quite as much on when you can shut them off sequentially and it does it automatically so we don't get too much overlap, which is really cool. But what's even cooler is how it works on the planter. Look at that. Even on the angles and the curves, it shuts off the rows as soon as they overlap that endro and that is awesome. We made it. it says we got 73 pounds left. But we're gonna go check the tank gauge and if it's on zero, I'm just gonna drop it here because I mean 77 pounds or 73 isn't even enough to do a half an acre. And my full tank is right there, so. Well, it's somewhere around four or 5%, which means either this tank was over full or I um, am not getting it on quite heavy enough. Either way, we're gonna run it out because that might Probably not, but it'll get me closer to finishing across the road. I was gonna be like five or six acres short. There is some variation in how they fill the tanks. They don't always have exactly the same amount in them. Sometimes you get one that's a little light, sometimes you get one that's a little heavy. So I'm not terribly concerned that there is some left in there yet. Just probably means this one was a little fuller than 4,200 pounds. Well, we did one acre. I didn't even get the endros done on the one side. Oh well. Feels like I've been doing endros forever in this field and I got more endros to do. Um, but we're getting a good start here. We're oh, seven or eight acres in. This one's kind of an odd shaped field that's uh, got rows running both directions. So it's, yeah, those rows go that way, but these rows go this way and we're not doing endros. We're kind of right out in the middle of it right now. Erosion control, that's why. We try and farm across the slopes as much as possible. So field shape looks like that. Rows over here run this way. Rows over here run this way. Got the little finger in the woods over here. That's back over there. So yeah, we'll try and get as much of it done as we can. Basically, we're going to run these two tanks out and see how close we get to being done. I just hooked up to the last tank for the night. Um, we got 31 acres done and about 30 three acres to go, which means we aren't quite going to get done. We're going to end up with about four acres left, I think, when this one in, in, runs empty. So this one is, it should not be that big of a deal. We'll um, hopefully be able to finish it in the morning and move on to the next field. I was just reading through some emails I got today, guys. 
I just want you all to know I am I'm basically Michael Jordan now. I mean, Nike sent me an email wanting to do a collaboration for me to promote their product, and they're going to pay me to do so. I mean, that basically makes me Michael Jordan, right? I haven't decided if it's a scam email and it's or if it's actually from Nike. It looks fairly legit, and I don't know why they would want me to make a vi video promoting them. What good does that do? Um, but whatever. I'm not interested. Well, I thought it was kind of cool, though. So I've been dodging some little showers, spit sprinkles here for the last little while, but check it out. Oh, my poor dirty window. You guys can't even hardly see it. Got a real sweet rainbow out there. Not exactly what you want to see when you're trying to work out in the fields, but cool nonetheless, right? Maybe up here. Nope, that's not any better. <laughs> Sorry. There. Oh, well, it was better for a second. Uh, not showing up very good, but now it's a full rainbow. Cool. And we got we got bright sunshine. Well, we are both about done and about out of anhydrous. We've got, what, two more full rounds to make and only 400 pounds in the tank. I don't think we're going to make it unless this tank had more in it than it's supposed to. Um but we're close. Nope. In fact, that was a little light, not a little full. Uh, four acres left, 4.08. So that's what I thought we would end up at. But, yep. All right. So I'm going to unhook this tank right up here by this other one that's empty and just take the bar back to the farm. And then in the morning, we'll get some tanks and keep going, provided it's not raining at that point. All right, guys. Well, it ended up not being too bad of a day. Better than yesterday. Um... So we got done down to Berkey, and we got 120-ish acres done here at Waldron, and yeah, we did over 200 today. That's a good day, no matter which way you look at it. So we're down to about 230 acres of corn to side dress yet. <clears throat> Could happen tomorrow if it doesn't rain, or we don't get rained out. I have got some corn that I would really like to get sprayed with some V5 fungicide, um, that needs to happen this week and with the rain forecasted I if I can do it tomorrow morning I'm gonna try and do that so maybe Phil will run the bar um, putting in hydras on Brock will be back tomorrow he can run tanks and maybe I will get to um, doing a little bit of spraying but all weather dependent if it's raining we've got boxes to pick up I've got seed to get returned picked up for returns and uh, other stuff going on so We'll see you guys in the morning. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Have a great night, everybody.